All right, give me something to talk about. Maybe something I know a lot about so I can really go into it. 9-11. Oh, fuck. survived the fire tonight it wasn't here but it was somewhere yes. could have been us it's it's fire season right fire season's rough for me because the air quality is uh, right the air quality sucks during fire season there was a fire next to my house in la i went outside i was like yeah i'm going outside i was like no, i'm going back in and I went in, I Google, what is the air quality today in my city? And Google said, air quality is bad for sensitive types. I was like, what a way to find out. I am a sensitive type. I got bullied by the air quality website. Like, what's next? Air quality is bad if you're a little bitch. Like, oh, dude, come on. Just tell me if I need an inhaler or not. It's tough. It's tough. But I'm, I'm impressed by very simple nowadays that's how like how, how hard it is for a lot of people i'll become impressed when somebody has a job <laughs> somebody's like yeah i have a job like oh shit you're like all day like you're <laughs> like you're all you're all there all day wow <laughs> just curious who here has a job yes. fantastic that sounded like a lot of people but it was only seven <laughs> i think we just calculated the unemployment rate it's a whopping 95 percent <laughs> right because having a job is not enough. There's been inflation in the last six months. So who's seen a raise in the last six months? Okay, two very silent people who are not sure if they got paid more or not. They're like, did I get more or do I just not know how to count? Here's my theory. If you're at a job and they're jacking up their prices so customers are paying more and they're not sharing that extra wealth with you, the valued employee, that you should be able to steal from that job. Who's with me? Who's with me? Who's with me? See? All the people who don't have jobs anymore. <laughs> How did we get here? The 95% that stole. We saw a stapler and we took it. We believed that we never had to buy tea again in our lives. And we now have every flavor of Lipton in our cabinet now. But we don't have a job. It's a pretty good trade-off. Anybody here get their student loans forgiven? No. One person in the very front. She's like, we're going to the front tonight. <laughs> I got some money back. How much did they forgive? $20,000. $20,000! Drinks on you! She pulled the fire alarm. She pulled the fire alarm. She's like, fuck this place. I got 20 k in the bizank. Y'all don't know about this life. This forgiven life. That's amazing. I'm very happy for you, and I'm glad that one person got forgiven here. Here's my question. Why do we still have college when we have the internet? Do you really need that anymore? There's people out there majoring in Joe Rogan right now. We don't need it. You've learned everything from YouTube. You've learned more from YouTube than your professors, right? You definitely learn more from the internet. Proof, did you learn more from sex ed or porn? That's a laughable question, right? Porn taught you everything that you needed to know. Sex ed was like the theory and porn was like the practice. Right? Like, sex ed didn't teach you how to Kegel to last longer, right? <laughs> sex ed didn't teach you all the noises to make, to make your partner think it's going better than it actually is. <laughs> and yes, sex ed can teach you the theory of pulling out, but porn actually shows you how fun it is. <laughs> what, did you, what did you major in? Chemistry. Chemistry. And what do you do now? Uh, uh, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> She's like, I put chemicals down my throat. I'm making a new language. <laughs> ah, some good sh <laughs> It's called alcohol. You're between jobs or something right now? Or? I'm a government analyst. You're a government analyst. Fantastic. Does it have anything to do with chemicals? No. Oh. No, no, God, no. God forbid I use what I actually studied for four plus years. But you made the choice to change, right? Sure, yeah. You could have, yeah, sure, yeah. It could have been a drug dealer. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> what the fuck you think, man? I'm, I choose, I run this shit. I got 20K. <laughs> start a little pharmacy if I want with my new, my old chemistry degree. Congratulations. Oh, it's hard. It's hard to use what you actually, I studied math and now I'm, I'm a comedian and I'm, I'm writing a book, I'm writing a book. Uh, yeah, but nobody wants to publish it. So that does suck. Yeah, it's well, I, I okay. So the book, it's, uh, it's about Salman Rushdie. You guys know Salman Rushdie? Yeah, fucking hero, right? 
but nobody wants to publish it because it's from the Ayatollah's perspective. It's called Shawshank Redemption. Um, <laughs> it's okay. He's okay. He's going to be okay. It's fine. It's fine. And if you don't like that joke, yeah, you can stab me. Uh, I'm a writer. Thank you. Um, was uh, hanging out at a local falafel joint because I am a walking stereotype. My favorite spot. I got the order I get every time. It's the number 911. Uh, they, no, they cook it inside. It's an inside job. It's beautiful. I'm sitting there eating my falafel with a little baba ganoush. And uh, I know everybody who works there. So the server comes out from the kitchen to give this woman a dish. And they argue for a moment. And then he goes back in. And she's frustrated. She tells her friend. She's like, ah, I don't know what he was saying. I don't speak Middle Eastern. I was like, oh, hell no. But I, like the Arab came out. I was like, oh, hell no. So I was angry. So I went up to her. I was like, yo, that was racist. And she was like, why? I'm like, because he's Mexican. He's like, I'm El Salvador. And I'm like, stay out of this, buddy. I got this. I'm the Karen today. Thank you. You guys got all weird when I said Mexican. Not a Mexican joke crowd, I see. That's fine. I'm, uh, I'm Palestinian-American. Uh, yes, I'm openly Palestinian. Thank you. I was, I was closeted for 30 years. And then I came out last year with the Hadid family. They made it feel safe. Yeah, it's not doing me good in Hollywood doing Palestinian jokes, I'm telling you that much. I'm not a suicide bomber, but I am a career suicide bomber. It sucks because growing up, the media portrays Palestinians as terrorists, but every Palestinian is a very smart person. So it was like cognitive dissonance. I'm like, how are all Palestinians terrorists when every Palestinian I know, doctor, lawyer, engineer, really smart stand-up comedian, you know? <laughs> And yes, like any race, there are Palestinian terrorists, okay? I'll be the one to say it. There are Palestinian terrorists. But even when they're terrorists, they're rocket scientists. <laughs> oh, too much for you guys, huh? <laughs> Chemistry liked it. You can't win with these jokes because some people will get offended and some people are like, you didn't go hard enough, dude. I have people who say that. They're like, dude, you need to go harder on the Israeli military. I'm like, you want me to go against the Israeli military? Have you seen my face? I'm an influencer. I could never go against the Israeli military. I have too much in common with them. We both bomb so often, it's become normalized. Hey, if you don't like that joke, it's because it's bombing. Maybe you're angry, frustrated. Now you know what it feels like to be a Palestinian. Yeah, politics and comedy, everybody's favorite. Like, I, I, I'm into politics, but not too much because I still like to laugh. Right? People who are too extreme into politics, they've lost touch with their sense of humor. It sucks. They're both the same. It doesn't matter if you're left or right. You're basically the same person. Like, I have friends who are like, I'm progressive. And you tell one vegan joke, they flip the out. And then I have friends who are conservative who are like, freedom of speech, you tell one gun joke. They're like, that's not funny. <laughs> it's like, can't you see you heads are both the same? You're fighting all day, being dicks to each other, but end of the day, you're both united by the fact that you're both pussies who can't take a joke. <laughs> and if you're not laughing at that, <laughs> It's all good, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if what your politics are you know, you should still be able to laugh, man. Well, I, I, I just don't like that people get so married to politics they can't even have conversations. And they'll stick to a candidate even when that candidate becomes a complete It doesn't matter who they are, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't give a Like, there's nothing wrong with, like, changing your mind about somebody you voted for. That's what this country needs to hear right now. There's nothing wrong with that. Being a president is just like riding a bike. Sometimes you fall off. It's just... <laughs> Oh, you liked it until I turned it on that, huh? Okay. Okay, San Francisco. Good. All right, we're back. We're back in business. I was in front of a grocery store. A guy comes up to me. He was like, hey, you have a moment to stop child hunger? I was like, well, I'm not a child, but I could eat. He's like, no, that's not what I meant. I'm like, obviously. He's like, I meant, do you have a moment to donate $100 to 
to sponsor a child every month? I'm like, that is a completely different question from having a moment. Like, I have a lot of moments. I don't have a lot of hundreds. And I don't make hundreds in a moment, so I don't know how you calculated that. I was like, how much money do you make doing this? He's like, oh, I do this for free. I have a job. I make 50 an hour at my job, but I have to work part-time so I can come out and do this. I'm like, you make 50 an hour at your job? If you just stayed at your job, worked full-time, and donated half of your money, you could save way more kids. And save us from this uncomfortable, confusing conversation. Let's be honest, you're gonna save a lot of people from a lot of things. He was like, wow, that was amazing how you just put that all together. I'm like, yeah, it's called taking a moment to stop child hunger. You should try it sometime. Oh, fantastic. You guys are a good crowd. Fantastic. Anybody had an orgasm lately? Yeah. Fuck yeah, one person. We're doing good. We're doing good. Just takes one. I miss my ex because she would get multiple orgasms. That means more than one, right? She would get multiple orgasms, but always in multiples of four, right? As a math major, <gasps> so hot. Always in four. It was like pop, 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 like the four seasons. Pop, 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 like the one little quartet. It was beautiful. Yeah, I called her kumquat. I miss her. I miss her. Okay. All right, guys, give me something to talk about. Maybe something I know a lot about so I can really go into it. 9-11. Oh, <laughs> dude. F you, man. That was f***ed up, what you just said, dude. I'm a millennial, dude. I remember that. Like, most people in here are of age where you remember, like, where you were when you first heard about 9-11. That's how serious that it was for us. Like, I'll never forget. When I first heard about 9-11, it was September 5th, 2001. <laughs> I was in a cave in Pakistan, and um, I was just like, no, 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 this is a bad idea, guys, this is a bad idea, bad idea. I can't be a part of this, and I left that cave. I left that cave, and I came straight to America, and I got in really easily, because it was before 9-11, but uh, I did my part. I called up the Bush administration. I was like, yo, you guys need to know about this. It's going down. It's an attack. They're like, we already know. It's an inside job. Do you want to help? I was like, no, I want help what is wrong with you so i just sightseed for the next six days while i could and just you know really just it was hard reliving it a second time and uh, you know it just very very difficult i just it hurts like when you say something like that it just hurts you know yo just because i look like this doesn't mean i love my country any less than anybody in here you remember that shit, okay please god bless america and never forget nine five Thank you guys so much. I'm Samuel Bay. Thanks for coming out to the punchline tonight. You guys are amazing.